26 past three here on ABC Newcastle, a national walk safely to school day. And I imagine there are quite a few kids with parents currently walking home from school, splashing in the puddles, ruining their shoes. Everybody would agree that getting our children to walk more isn't a bad idea. But a collection of walking advocates don't agree with the notion of making it one day of the year. They'd like to see kids walking every day and to do what we need to do to make that possible, to make our streets safer. Matthew McLaughlin is a public health researcher with the University of Newcastle and also the University of Western Australia. He's with us now. Matthew, good day. Thanks for coming on. Hi, Paul. You're part of this 30 Please campaign. What's it all about? We are. We're, we're talking about 30 kilometre an hour speed limits, one of those um, sometimes devices topics. Mm. Uh, but we're talking about it for safety. We're talking about it for kids. We know it works, um, and it's really good to see days like National Walk Safely to School Day, but it's not going far enough. Matthew, we regularly drive past schools on our main roads. I presume that that's an anachronistic planning policy, that we no longer put schools on main roads, surely? It's not, actually. Um, Yeah, it still happens. Um, Luckily, we've got the 40 kilometre an hour speed limits in place, but it's, it's not far enough. We know that drivers make mistakes. We know that People make mistakes and kids make mistakes. We can't rely on messaging like hold hands with your parents until age 10 to reduce the road death toll, which, you know, unfortunately saw 66 children die last year on our roads and over a 1,000 more Australians. Matthew, what do we know about kids and their capacity to, to keep themselves safe around transport? Do they need to be of a certain age, a certain level of development? Well, in some countries, um, they, they get out and about from the ages of two and three independently. Um, at least, you know, definitely in some countries by four or five, they're independently walking around outside six, seven years old. For us, we're giving the messaging across on National Walk to School Day um, in this campaign, which, you know, we don't think is right. We don't think it should be saying, hold your parents' hand until age 10, because that's sending the wrong message. It's sending that kids can't travel independently. If we build the right environments, which includes lower speed limits and safe pedestrian crossings, then of course kids can walk to school and it's safe for them. And it's not just safe for them, it's it's safe for everybody else as well. Does 30 please require an expansion of the restricted zones? Because, I mean, if, if you want to keep kids safe and they, they're going to walk more than the 200 metres where, you know, the 40 zones are placed either side of a school at the moment. That's right. It's about expanding existing measures and putting in new measures in place. You know, if you take an analogy of, say, plane crash safety, we don't just rely on giving a message at the start of the journey to, you know, put your seatbelt on and watch out. Um, If you're in a crash, there's obviously a lot that goes on in the cockpit. The pilots are highly trained. Um, There's a lot of technology that goes into it. And we, we think we should be applying that to cars. Uh, it's it's relatively new technology, but it's there. It's possible to limit the speed of vehicles in areas that um, people are mixing with traffic. Um, and, and hopefully, you know, a mixture of messages like education campaigns and also enforcing speed limits, importantly. Nobody likes getting a speeding ticket in the post, but it's a very important reminder that speeding kills and speeding maims people, and we need to do more. What's the conversation with the bureaucrats, or what? Where are you up to with that? Is is the message being received and being considered? It's 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 getting on the the agenda, um, which is really good. We've seen that New Zealand, for example, just yesterday have adopted outside all uh, schools that there'll be a default speed limit of thirty kilometres an hour. In New South Wales, um, there's conversations going on, but it needs to accelerate. It it really has to rapidly accelerate. Like I said, you know, 66 children dying last year, unfortunately, on our roads. It is too too high in Australia. We need to do a lot more. But And we know what the solutions are. Um, you know, some of them may not be the most wildly popular solutions, but we know that people want safe streets, It's uh, and we know how to get there. Is it true that in places like Norway and Finland, in some of the major cities, children are, n- are not killed by cars, that they have perfect records? That's, that's correct, yeah. So in 2019, um, cities across um, yeah, the Scandinavian countries saw no deaths on the roads, uh, which is fantastic. This, but 
you know, this is a safety thing. It is, for sure. Um, and nobody wants to see children dying. Nobody wants to see Australians dying. This is also about creating an environment where walking is a positive thing to do, you know. We've got a lot of cars on little journeys clogging up our, our roads, clogging up congestion, you know, nipping to the shops, which is only 500 metres away. That's clogging up all of the roads that we could be using for longer journeys, you know. So walking's a, a really good thing for our health as well, our physical health, our mental health. Um, and the countries in Scandinavia have realised this. They've realised that they can save on healthcare costs if they make it safer for people to be physically active. Matthew, good to get that reminder. Thanks for coming on. Brilliant. Thanks, Paul. Matthew McLaughlin, public health researcher at the University of Newcastle, pushing for that 30 zone around schools. 30 Please is the campaign that a lot of professionals in his sector are advocating for.